Good morning. Okay, let me give you a, a brief background of the HOPE program. The HOPE program, the HOPE scholarship program, started back in 1993. So it's been around for a while. I started working for Georgia Northwestern Tech at that time, it was Walker, back in 1994. So I've been here just about as long as the HOPE program have, have been with us. But the HOPE scholarship program consists of two programs, the HOPE grant <coughs> and the HOPE scholarship. A lot of students get the two mixed up because some students will come to my office and I say, well, you have to be a HOPE Scholar to be in a degree program. They say, well, I'm already getting HOPE Scholarship money. <clears throat> but if you're in a certificate or a diploma program, you're not getting HOPE Scholarship money. You're getting HOPE Grant money. And then the HOPE Scholarship pays for degrees only. And you have to be a HOPE Scholar to get the HOPE Scholarship money. So I wanted to point that out. And then the state legislatures made some changes in 2003, 2004, and said, okay, now we're gonna start counting the number of HOPE hours that we pay for for students. So in 2003 and four, from that point on, they set up a max cap. And some of you already know what that is, because some of you may have already maxed cap. So they set up a max cap for HOPE grant at 95 quarter hours and 190, quarter hours for HOPE scholarship. So they have been counting those hours since 19, I mean 2003, four school year. Then this year in 2011, they really made some changes. And that's what we want to focus on today, are the changes that they have just recently made and still are trying to work out all the ins and outs of how we are to implement some of these. So some of these things have not been settle on as to how we are to do our business. But we know most and we can give you what we have at this time. Before we go into the HOPE changes, I want to mention a lot of students want to know what is considered full time for that short five week period for summer. For federal aid, full time still would be 12 hours. Now we do realize that none of you probably will be able to take 12 hours. That'll be too heavy of a load to try to take 12 hours. So, uh, but for federal aid, it's still considered full time, and then nine to, uh, to 11 hours would be considered three quarter time, six to eight hours would be considered half time, and less than uh, six hours would be considered less than half time. For those of you that may be veterans, you would get your VA pay at full time if you're at least five hours. And then, for those of you who may need some insurance verification, the technical system of Georgia has indicated that five hours would be sufficient for the registrar's office to certify you for full time. So I know some of you probably needed to know that information. Now let's look at our HOPE grant for summer quarter. First of all, thank goodness they decided to delay the uh, changes until, most of the changes until the fall semester. So for summer quarter, the tuition still would be paid at 100%. The tuition will be $50 per credit hour for summer term. And, the, and your HOPE grant will pay 100% of your tuition. Also, for summer quarter, they will continue to pay your mandatory fees. Someone asked me yesterday, what is that $46 fee? I never paid it. Your HOPE has been paying it, so you probably didn't even know it was there but the HOPE grant has been paying that fee for you. Those are your student activity fees and things of that sort. The $35 technology fee has never been paid by HOPE and still will not be paid by HOPE. That's your responsibility, the 35 technology fee. We're gonna to try to save the questions to the end. If that's all right, jot your question now. And then here's the change for summer term. This is the change. If you're Pell eligible, you will still get the $100 book if you're taking six or more credit hours. $50 if you're taking five or less. If you're not Pell eligible, you will only get $50 for six or more hours, $25 for five or less. So that's the big change for summer. 
Now, how will that work? A lot of you are used to taking that $35 tech fee out of your book. Well, if you're Pell eligible, it will still be the same thing. <clears throat> You'll have $65 left to use in the bookstore with $100. If you're taking six or more, if you're taking five or less, you still have the $15 to use in the bookstore. However, if you're not Pell eligible, you're only going to get $50 for six or more. You st you'll have $15 left to use in the bookstore. But if you're taking five or less, you will not have quite enough to pay your technology fee of $35. You owe an additional $10. So please know how many hours you're taking and what, what's being paid because you know they'll drop you if you owe $1. So you don't want to be dropped because you still owe $10 on a technology fee, okay? Now, if you're Pell eligible, of course, Pell will still pay. We'll talk about all that in a few minutes, but I do want you to know that that is the big change for the Summer Hope Grant program. These things have not changed. It will still pay if you have a baccalaureate degree, master's degree, what have you, and you want to come and take a <clears throat> certificate or a diploma program, it will still pay for you to do that. It'll give you hope, grant. You must always maintain satisfactory academic progress, which is called SAP. Must always maintain that with a 2.0 GPA, 66.6% completion rate. It will still pay for learning support classes, and the learning support classes will continue to count in the max cap for summer term. And the cap is still 95 quarter hours, uh, for most programs, because if your program does not require 30, 95 hours, it's going to cut you off at 95. You know how sometimes you change majors? And when you're changing majors like that, sometimes you will run out of hope hours. But those of you that are in programs that run longer than 190, I mean 95 hours, if you're in um, rad tech or radiology, some of those type programs that may require 141 hours to complete that diploma program, it will pay up to 130 hours, but that is the absolute max cap for summer term. It will pay up to 130 hours. Also, if you're at 94 hours at the start of summer and need to take 10 hours, it will pay for you to take all 10 hours. So it'll let you go over the 95 if you're taking it in your last quarter. This is for summer quarter only. Okay? The residence is still the same for HOPE grant, 12 months prior to the term that you want to use the HOPE grant. Now, for the HOPE grant for, for fall semester, for fall semester, the first thing you want to do is try to convert your quarter hours to semester hours. 45 quarter hours will equal to 30 semester hours, and you get that by just multiplying it times 1.5. Your 95 quarter hours will equal to 63 semester hours. So that 95 cap quarter is the same as the 63 cap for semester term. It would be 63 hours. Now, you know Hope used to cover everything, but it does not cover everything anymore. For fall semester, the HOPE grant is going to pay $60.75 per credit hour. Your charge is going to be $75 per credit hour. And the HOPE grant will pay $60.75 of that. The $75 charge will be for all programs, whether you're in basic law, truck driving, or what have you. We have certain programs that cost more than others. But Hope Grant is only going to pay $60.75 per hour, no matter what your program costs. For learning support classes, the Hope Grant will continue to pay fall. For dual enrollment, Hope Grant will continue to pay. Dual enrollment, some of you may have children that are 12th grade and want to try to take classes here at Georgia Northwestern Tech. It will pay for those high school children to take classes here. But for fall semester, 
The HOPE grant will not pay any fees. That's the $46 fee or the $35 tech fee. For fall semester, the HOPE grant will not give you any money toward books. But if you're Pell eligible, Pell will continue to pay. If you have a bachelor's or a master's degree, the HOPE grant will no longer pay for you to work on a certificate or a diploma. Now this is really the big thing, one of the big changes for the HOPE grant program for fall semester. And as you'll notice, I'll put in red, waiting on implementation rules from G GSS, Georgia Student Finance Commission. So we're waiting on some implementation rules on this. But for what we know right now, you will have to have a GPA requirement to maintain your HOPE grant. You're gonna have to have a 3.0 GPA to maintain your HOPE grant. So at the end of summer term, when we're checking GPAs, if you've accumulated at least 30 semester hours, you must have a 3.0. Some of you say, well, I've already done 30 and 80. I already have that many hours. You must have a 3.0, okay? If you lose the whole grant at that checkpoint, you have one opportunity to regain it. And so therefore, we can check you at the 60th semester hour. And if you have a 3.0 at that time, we'll be able to give you your HOPE grant back. Now, I just said that the cap for semester is going to be what? 63. So if you regain it at the 60th, how many hours you got left on HOPE grant? Three hours. Okay? Now, learning support, those, those math 098s, 099, 097, English 098, those classes will not count toward the GPA requirement, okay? If you were here early and had some dual enrollment hours back, if you came here as a dual enrolled student, those hours will not count as well. Fall semester, again, the paid hour cap will be 63 hours. This is gonna be a hard cap regardless of the program length. Now we just said summer term, if you were at 62 hours and you needed to get to 63, it would pay for all the courses for summer, but not for fall. If you're at 62 paid hours with a 3.02 GPA at the start of fall quarter, and you registered for 15 hours, the HOPE grant will only pay for one of the 15 hours that you're taking, up to the 63 cap. Okay, fall semester, the HOPE grant will cover 90% of the current tuition. Now, this percentage will change from year to year. It's gonna be regulated by the state of Georgia. But for this year, for the 11-12 year, they're gonna pay 90% of the current tuition. Well, right now, the current tuition for the 10-11 year is $45, right? So they're gonna pay 90%. So first of all, for fall semester, we have to take that $45 and convert it to semester, which would be multiplying it times 1.5, so that $45 will equal to $67.50. Then you get 90% of that, and that's how we come up with the $60.75 that Hope Grant will pay for one credit hour. Again, we take the current rate right now, the $45 times 1.5, we're converting it to the semester rate, which is $67.50, then we take that and multiply it times the 0.9 that the state of Georgia say they will pay, which comes out to the $60.75.
Right now, your fees are the $46 mandatory fee and the $35 technology fee for a total of what? $81. We will have to convert that to the fall rate. GNTC did not raise your rate for fees, but we do have to convert it to a fall semester by multiplying it times 1.5. So those fees will convert to $122 per semester. So if you're taking 15 hours fall term and the charge is $75 an hour for fall, then your total charges for the 15 hours is going to be $1,125. The Hope Grant will pay $911.25 of those charges. That means the student will owe $213.75. Hope is not gonna cover your fees. So that's an additional $122 you will owe on fees for a total of $335.75. I've stuck a little table in here to show you a conversion of what it would cost you if you were taking one, two, three through 15 hours. That's what it would cost you. The student pays that amount, then the fees for a total of the last column there. And we'll have some of those tables in our office if somebody would like to come by and pick up a table. But that's a conversion table of what it would cost you per credit hour. Residency, new for fall semester. You have to be a resident of Georgia upon graduation from high school. You have to be a resident of Georgia for 24 months prior to the term that you want to use the HOPE grant. Not 12 months anymore, but 24 months. 24 months. Residents of active duty personnel, the member, the service member, the spouse, the dependent, child care, I mean the child, or Georgia residents for hope purposes if they are stationed in Georgia. We don't have a station anywhere near here, but if that were the case, then those people would be eligible without having to wait to 24 months. Now, Let's go back to summer term on the scholarship. Again, we said it was a difference between the grant and the scholarship. Scholarship pays for the degree programs. And to be a Hope Scholar, you have to have graduated from high school uh, 1993 or later as a, as a Hope Scholar with a 3.0 or better GPA. Or you can become a scholar after having attempted at least 45 quarter hours with a 3.0 or better GPA or after attempting 90 quarter hours with a 3.0 or better GPA, or after attempting 135 quarter hours with a 3.0 or better GPA. So it will continue to pay 100% at the $50 charge for summer quarter. It will pay your mandatory fees, and the $35 take fee is still your responsibility. You will still be checked at the same checkpoints for summer quarter, the 45th hour, the 90th hour, and the 135th hour. And at each of those checkpoints, you still must have the 3.0 GPA to maintain the HOPE scholarship. It will pay the book based on Pell eligibility, just like on the HOPE grant. If you are six or more hours, you get the $100 if you're Pell eligible. Five or less, you get 50. And if you're not Pell eligible, you get the 50 for six or more. 25 for five or less. Fall semester, Hope Scholarship. Again, you need to convert your hours to see what your quarter hours equal to on the semester level. And for the Hope Scholarship, when we convert 190 quarter hours, the max cap would be 127 semester hours. And just like the summer one for Hope Grant, it's going to pay $60.75 toward that $75 charge. No Hope Award for fees, no Hope Award for books. Now, this is really important. Degree students, of course, no Hope Award for scholarship. 
but for learning support. A lot of you are used to taking the math 098, 099, and so forth in your degree programs. It will not cover, the Hope Scholarship will not cover learning support classes. So this summer term, while Hope Scholarship and Grant are still paying, it's a good time to get some of those 09 level classes out of the way. Because come fall term, if you're in a degree program and Hope Scholar, the Hope Scholarship is not going to pay. Pell will continue to pay. Fall semester, the GPA requirements, there's no change. They will stay the same. We will be checking you at the 30th, 60th, and 90th checkpoint and also at the spring term check. You still must maintain a 3.0. And again, we've already said learning support classes, no hope award, and the max cap is 127 hours. Now, here's the big part of the HOPE scholarship. Students become ineligible for HOPE scholarship seven years after the date they graduated high school or equivalent, which would be your GED. Students who received a HOPE scholarship payment during the 2010-11 year, which is the school year we are in right now. If you're, if you're considered a HOPE scholar this fiscal year, you will remain eligible through June 30, as long as you keep your GPA up. You remain eligible through June 30, 2015, regardless of your graduation date. And of course, after due to military people, we would account for the time that you made between that seven year period, you may have had to serve active duty. We can work with that, you just need to come see us personally. But to recap, if you're not a Hope Scholar right now, and you graduated more than seven years ago from high school. And fall, you're gonna be accepted into the RN program. You got the GPA to switch over to scholarship. The Hope Scholar will not pay. You have to be a Hope Scholar right now, this fiscal year, and we're in the last term of this fiscal year. Residency, the same as with Hope Grant for fall semester, it's gonna be a 24 month period. A 24 month period, so it's the same as the Hope Grant. Okay, they came up with a new scholarship called the Zell Miller Scholarship, but it will not be effective until fall semester. It will pay 100% of your tuition, not 90%. It will pay 100% of your tuition charges. But it still will not pay any mandatory fees or books. But it'll pay 100%. It still will not pay for any learning support classes, the 09 level classes. And the cap will still be 127 hours. Now, who qualifies for the Zell Miller Scholarship? The eligibility requirement is going to be determined by Georgia Student Finance Commission. And students must first meet the HOPE scholarship requirements with a 3.0 out of high school. And have graduated from an eligible Georgia high school with a 3.7. Now, I said they first got to be a HOPE scholar, but they have to have graduated with a 3.7 GPA. Not a 3.0, a 3.7 GPA. And along with that, they also have to have at least 1,200 on a single administration of the SAT test. In other words, you can't take parts and parts and parts and try to come up with the 1,200. One sitting. You gotta have at least a 1,200 on the, ACE, on the uh, SAT or a composite score of 26 on the ACT or if you, graduate, if you didn't graduate high school but you were homeschooled, if you were homeschooled, after attempting the first 30 semester hours, if you have a 3.5 GPA on the first 30 semester hours, and also satisfy the ACT and SAT requirement, that's two parts. You can become a Zell Miller Scholar. 
And then another way you can become a Zell Miller Scholar, if you graduated high school as the valedictorian or salutatorian from an, el from an eligible high school here in the state of Georgia, you can become a Zell Miller Scholar. And last, if you are entering freshman between the dates of July 1, 2007 and June 30, 2011, you may qualify after the first 30-hour checkpoint if you have a 3.3 GPA and also met one of the other requirements that stated above. Either you were a valedictorian, salutatorian, or you had those scores. So it's a, it's a dual thing that you have to meet. The GPA requirement to maintain the scholarship is a 3.3 GPA. So at the 30 hour, the 60 hour, and 90 hour checkpoints, you must have a 3.3 GPA. If you lose your Hope Scholarship, <clears throat> you can only lose it one time. You can, I mean, when, once you lose your whole Hope Scholarship, you have one opportunity to regain it. If you lose your Hope Scholarship, your Hope Zell Miller, I said Hope, Zell Miller Scholarship, you only have one opportunity to regain it. And that will be at one of those checkpoints. You'll have to have your 3.3. Now, let's say you have a 3.29. If you have a 3.29, we can take you off the Zell Miller Scholarship and put you back on just the Hope Scholarship. And that way, you'll at least get 90% paid under the Hope Scholarship. So you just have to maintain the 3.0 for the Hope Scholarship. But for the Zell Miller, you have to maintain a 3.3. Now, how many HOPE hours do I have? This is where you can go to check to see how many HOPE hours you have. It'll show you how many quarter hours you have, how many se and how it converts to semester. But this is why it's not in your handout. But I think uh, Mr. Foley's going to be putting that on your Facebook and Twitter pages. Or you can just copy this link down. Okay, what about my pale? Now some things have not been defined <clears throat> with the pale grant. I got an email this morning from the state office saying that they're meeting and we should know something very soon. But let's just look at some scenarios with the pale. You're gonna get more money for pale <clears throat> under the new Q2S. And it should make up the difference that you're going to lose on the hopes. That's good news. We've given you a lot of bad news, but this is the good news. If we decide to do Pell in thirds, your Pell is going to be worth $18.50 if you're full time. You're accustomed to getting $13.87.50. So see, it's going to make up more than make up the difference. Now we know summer term. You're not going to be able to take <clears throat> 12 or more hours to get that full-time 1875. But if you take two classes, as Dr. Dr. Uh, Junior asked us to, you should be 10, you should be maybe 9, 10 hours. If you're three-quarter time, you're going to get the 138750, which you're accustomed to getting anyway. You see? Okay, if you get the 138750, you're going to owe $335.75 if you take the 15 hours or however many hours. Nobody's going to take that many, but I just took the highest amount. That still leave you with a pail of 1051 and 75 cents. So just think that uh, we will only be subtracting out a little bit out of that pail, so you still get a good size pail check. Or it may be that we will do your pale in half for fall semester, spring semester. You would get 2775 pale per term. If you were full time, 12 or more hours, three quarter time, nine to 11 hours, you get $2,082.25. If you were six to eight hours, which is half time, you would get 1387.50, which is the figure that you're accustomed to seeing. So just half time you would get what you're accustomed to getting. 
And last, if you were less than half time, you'll get $693.75. But the only thing about dividing the pail in half, that's only giving it to you for two terms. What about summer? So that's why the state office is looking at this and they want all schools to be uniform through the state system. My feeling is they don't come back and say do it in thirds. Because we have a lot of students who are in programs that they have to go year round. They can't stay out summer. We don't want you to stay out summer. We want everybody here every term. So my feeling is they're going to come back and say do it in thirds. And as I've shown you a few minutes ago, you're still going to be okay pretty much with what you're accustomed to getting anyway. Now, let's look at uh, satisfactory academic policy, because to maintain that Pell Grant and HOPE, you have to have at least a 2.0 GPA to maintain your financial aid period. And you must have a completion rate of 66.6% of all hours attempted. I know sometimes students are uh, get on probation or suspended, and they say, well, I have a good GPA this term. But what about all the other terms? We look at everything cumulatively. We don't look at just one term. We look at all the terms you've had since you've been here to determine your satisfactory academic policies. And of course, you must complete your program within 150% of the, pro uh, the time it takes to complete the program. We will be changing a little of our terms for SAP. Instead of putting you on financial aid probation, it will be called financial aid warning. The federal government says we've got to use the word warning. So we're going to comply with what they say we've got to do. But it's the same thing. So instead of getting a letter saying you're on probation, you get a letter saying you're on financial aid warning. And you'll be gave, given aid for the next term. And you have that one term to get back up to standards. If you're not back up to standards by the end of that first term, you will get a financial aid suspension letter saying no financial aid, you must pay. At that point, you can do an appeal. The student can appeal. If the financial aid office decides that you can get off and be back up to standards in one term, we'll put you back on probation. That is a new term. That's the Fed's new term. We can put you back on probation after you've done an appeal. And if you can't do it in one term, then we have to do what we call an academic plan. And so we would sit down with you and give you an academic plan, and you must follow that plan. And if you follow that plan and successfully with, with that plan, then that should put you back to good standing to continue to receive your financial aid. But you will receive financial aid while you're working the plan. The appeal procedure would be to go by the financial aid office or go to our website, get the appeal form, fill it out, and get it back to financial aid. Financial aid will get it to the appeals committee. The appeals committee will act on it and try to let, let you know something as soon as possible as to the outcome. The appeal form must have supporting documentation attached. It can't be that I was young and stupid at the time and I didn't realize that this was important. Now I'm really serious about my work and I'm ready to go to work. It has to, you know, so you got to have a, a good excuse to attach to the appeal. Now, some reminders. Everybody needs to reapply for financial aid. Is there anybody here who has not applied for financial aid for the 11, 12 year? I know we've already brought in over 4,000 records. You need to get on that right away. Just always think of tax time being the right time to do your FAFSA. Because once you've completed that tax return, April 15th, it's time to start working on that FAFSA, if not, if not even earlier. Because if you don't file a tax, you need to do it much earlier than that. And when we send your missing information letter via your email, that's where you really need to check your email, you need to get those documents in a, in to us in a timely manner. I want to remind everybody that if you've had a student loan prior to coming to Georgia Northwestern Tech, stay current with that loan. Make sure you're getting your deferments if you're back in school. Because if you default on a student loan, that makes you ineligible for any financial aid. And a lot of times, lending, uh, lending companies will say, okay, you can rehabilitate your loan, make six consecutive payments, and then you can become Title IV eligible. But that's all. You become Title IV eligible, which is federal aid. But the state of Georgia says once you default, you got to pay it in full before they will grant you HOPE funds. 
So always try to stay current on your loan. And of course, keep up your staff, keep, hope, keep track of your HOPE hours, and always check your banner web for up-to-date information on your financial aid. Well, one thing I want to say about that five-week summer term, we learned a couple of weeks ago, they're going to have a hard deadline date for us submitting records to Georgia Student Finance, and that's the company, that, that's the agency that pays us for your HOPE monies. And they have given us a date of July 28th. Even though the summer term will not end until August the 10th, I think it's the last final, if you walk in with your financial aid paperwork on, August, on July the 29th, we can't award you hope. They have given us a hard deadline date early in the term. More, oh no, it's always been after the term, but now it's, it's early in the term. So be sure that summer term, you get all your paperwork in, make sure your award is on uh, so you won't have that problem. We're doing all we can to help you. Loans will be coming. We're trying to get ready for fall semester. So look out for student loans. That will help you, those of you that may lose it because of the GPA and so forth. The student loans are coming. So you want to look out for information sessions. We're hoping to have those sometime in May or June. And you want to make sure you complete your FAFSA because to get a loan, you do have to do the FAFSA. Also coming soon, we are looking into payment plans. The business office is looking into setting up some payment plans with outside agencies that will assist you if you cannot afford to pay the difference that so you can pay it maybe in some type of installment plan. But anyway, we're looking at some payment plans that may assist students, so look for additional information uh, as we explore that venture. Again, we can't emphasize enough, check student email. All your missing information letters are going through student email. Your probation warning letters will go through email. Suspension letters will go through email. Students say, why am I dropped from class? You were suspended. We sent you an email. I hadn't checked my email. Well, we notified you. So please, we can't say that enough. Check your email. If you need to get in touch with us, the Walker campus, that's who we are. Any of you may attend some of the other campuses. That's who uh, the people that are on the other campuses. But the Walker campus, we are at the top there, so you can see who we are, which is our first initial last name at gntc.edu. No matter what you think, that's not true. We do not have that. <laughs> okay, are there any questions?